Question is from Dance Girl. What are the benefits of isometric holds? For example, a wall sit. You know, it's funny with isometric uh, type. So if you don't know what that means, so there's there's three main types of muscle contractions. There's the concentric contraction. This is when I'm actually lifting something. So think of a bicep, right? Me curling a weight up, that's concentric. Me lowering the weight, that's another form of contraction that's called eccentric. And then there's holding something that's isometric. And it's funny because uh, or ex- there's the isometric holds go in and out of favor in the in the fitness space. Both that and eccentric. I they think. do. I think both those two are overlooked. But yeah. isometric a lot. Like isometric was valued a lot a long time ago. Uh, wrestlers and you know grapplers and when weight training became a thing initially in the early days of lifting weights. Yeah. Isometrics was a big was a big thing. The Soviets. Uh, really utilize isometric training quite a bit. In fact, they have some of the best studies on isometric training. I love isometric training because they create little da- damage for the amount of uh, the amount of results you get from them. So it's a great way to add volume to your mm-hmm, workout mm-hmm. without overtraining your body. Um, the strength that you gain from an isometric hold, most of it's in the in the hold itself, but there's a lot of carryover to outside of that. Well, it's position. also one of the best ways to, to teach how to get connected to a muscle. Totally. Right? We talk about a muscle connection, mind muscle connection. People throw that term around a lot. You know, this is one of the best ways to help somebody get connected there is, you know, in a wall sit. You know, what's cool about a wall sit is you can be in a wall sit and there's there's many muscles that are being contracted, but you can sit in it and actually mentally engage the ones that you want to put more emphasis yeah. on. Mm-hmm. So I could be in a wall sit and I can make it really quad, you know, and just totally tense up my quads. Or I can kind of shift it back into my glutes and squeeze and tense my glutes to hold me up in that That's position. That's what I like about it. It allows for the time for you to really connect and feel your way through, uh, the, you know, the muscles and into the recruitment process. So it's like, you know, can I summon up more of an army, you know, for for this job that I have? And that's, that's part of it. Like you can do it from like any angle too, which is a great benefit to it. So if there's a part of an exercise you feel like you don't have that much support, you don't have that much strength yeah. in Yes, good point. Let's just let's just focus on that for a while. Let's feel our way through it. Let's squeeze and, and see if we can recruit more, so we get more powerful in, in that movement. No, and that's, that's it's a perfect exercise. That's for that. a great uh, great point. So to, to use that as an example, let's say you're you you like to squat, but you notice at the bottom of your squat you tend to lose a little bit of stability. Your knees wobble a little bit, or your your pelvis tilts, or you just don't feel as connected. A great way to can connect to that portion of the rep is to do an isometric hold in that portion of the rep. We did a great YouTube video on this. Mm-hmm. We did it. It's a Dumphy squat. And mm-hmm. I know uh, Justin introduced that to us for that exact reason that you're talking about right now, Sal. And I think it's one of the most overlooked. Here's what you got to remember is like, we and we tend to do this. <coughs> we do an exercise, we do something and it's like, we want the immediate results. Like tomorrow, why was I not sore enough? Or, oh, I didn't see something change. It's like, that's not what you're doing when you do something like that. Like if you go squat, 200 pounds 10 times and then you go do isometric holds for 10 reps you're going to feel the squat with 200 pounds on your back way more the next day it doesn't necessarily mean though that the the isometric hold couldn't be as beneficial for somebody if you're not getting good recruitment in your glutes and you're trying to focus on that just loading the bar up heavier just gets the body sore it doesn't necessarily mean that you're using utilizing the glutes as much as you like to yeah. so introducing these types of exercises it's the long-term carryover that you're getting it, that which is great because it seems to be it's, the theme of this episode is the you know you're doing something very small and basic but the carryover that it will have long term for you is going to be tremendous it's the first place you go when you have disconnection the mm-hmm. first place you go when you can't connect to a muscle well is to try to squeeze it in an isometric uh, position you know what western athletes uh, understood the benefits of isometrics on accident before other athletes bodybuilders Mm. Now you ask, well, how? How bodybuilders don't use isometric holds? Posing. They flex. Yeah. That's exactly right. And I remember as a kid stumbling upon this on accident. Because when I was a kid and I was lifting weights in the 90s, I, no magazines talked about isometric holds. But they did talk about the benefits of flexing and posing. They never used the word isometric, but they would say things like, Arnold, you know, when he would go up to, as he got closer to competition, he would spend an hour a day posing and bodybuilders would say, yeah, it helps bring out definition or whatever, you know, gym bro, you know, science. Or so I would practice flexing because of course Arnold did it and he's, you know, the bodybuilding God or whatever. And I would notice when I would practice more flexing, I'd feel better in my workouts. I would just be able to feel the muscles a little bit more. Um, and by the way, if you've never posed or flexed your muscles and held them, I'm not talking about just a flex and relax. 
Try holding a pose like a bodybuilder does on stage. I mean, when you're on stage as a bodybuilder and you're holding a front double bicep, you have to hold it and look good. Not just your biceps, you're flexing everything in a very nice, you know, you have to and look And increase really, the intensity of it. And you have to smile while you're doing it. You can't mm. look like you're, ah, you know, because that takes away from the look or whatever. And you're holding that shit for like 30 seconds. No. Try doing that. No joke. Try five minutes of posing where you're holding a flex. And remember, your whole body's getting looked at. So you're not just doing a lat spread or, uh, you know, a, a crab pose. The whole, the whole body's being presented. Try flexing your whole body in different poses. Hold your pose for, just hold it for 15 seconds. Just do that. Do that for five minutes and tell me that, that that's not a freaking amazing workout.